So um, like the description said, this is going to be a two-part series showing you how I built um, a barn door. So unfortunately for you, but fortunately for me, that project is already done and installed, which is why I'm standing in front of an old project, which is um, about to actually leave the shop because it's almost finished. But um, if you're looking for a, a series about how to install barn doors, this might not be the series for you. While I do have some footage on my, um, in, in the second video of, of the install, um, I do not love filming in people's homes. So I very rarely do it. And um, I'm kind of a tornado in my shop, as you can tell, and that doesn't translate well to then going and installing in people's homes. So my, my method to that is to get in and out as fast as possible. And filming just adds a lot of unnecessary time onto that process. Um, I also do not feel comfortable asking people to film in their homes because I'm assuming a lot of people don't want their homes filmed and then put online, especially people that have children so um, I never want anyone to feel uncomfortable or feel obligated to tell me they have the yes or no. And um, so I just kind of avoid that whole conversation whatsoever. But I did get a couple just like real quick uh, shots of it, no, no solid footage. Um, so you will see how I hung it and what it looks like in the end. But as far as a step-by-step -step guide on how to do it, um, it won't be in this series. But I will show you how I built the, the door. I built it from scratch. Um, I built it in a very traditional style method to how you would build any sort of interior or exterior door with a frame and panel uh, design. I just think that that is not only the strongest, most structural way to do it, but it will last longer than, than some of the other doors I've seen being, being made on the market. So that is what this is going to be. It's only a two part series. This is a pretty quick one. And um, the first part is going to be solely showing you how I planed down the lumber and built the frame with the mortise and tenon joinery. And then the second part of the series will be um, the interior panel has a decorative design on it. And that took a little bit of extra time than just a regular panel. So I'll show you how I did that as well as some finishing. And then like I said, uh, some minimal footage of, of the actual install. So to start this project off, I went and got a couple boards of premium grade Douglas fir. This is a nicer grade of lumber than just regular construction 2x4s. They sell this at the Home Depot near me. They don't sell it at the Lowe's. You can see just how straight it is right off the rack. There are some knots in this stuff. It's usually not as knotty as this. You could find some pretty clear boards, but it's harder and harder to get nicer lumber um, with Corona right now. So I just was gonna have to fill some knot holes afterwards and, and deal with it. Um, if you've ever stripped an older door, they're usually made out of pine. And since this was going to be painted, there was really no point in spending the money on a really expensive hardwood. This stuff is really nice lumber, especially for something that you can get at a box store. So to start, I just trimmed it down, uh, my rails and styles to rough size. I'm also going to rip it down to rough size. This will all still need to be cut down to final size towards the end. But for now, it's easier to send it through my planer if it's a little bit shorter and um, a little bit thinner than what it is off the rack. So you can see I have three rails, a top and bottom and a middle, and then two side styles. Now the the size for this door is based off the wall, the, the opening to the door. Um, there is a molding frame around this door. So for the height, I went about an inch and a half taller, and that is in the, the directions for the barn door, and about an inch wider on either side than, than the barn door, than the uh, opening in her home. So that was about, I believe, 38 inches total and about 80 and a half inches tall is the final size of this door. Um, the kit I bought, the minimum size is an inch and three eighths for the door and the maximum size is an inch and three quarters. So this was inch and a half lumber and I ended up planing it down to about an inch and three eighths in order to get it nice and clean like, like how you see it coming through the planer. So this is the kit I got. The kit I got I purchased off Rockler. Um, I really trust the quality of the hardwood from Rockler, which is why I got it from there. This is a mid-range kit. There are ones that are, more, that are more expensive and ones that are cheaper. I like this one because I've gotten some hardware off, off Amazon, which has been pretty suspect. I haven't cared for it. So like I said, I trust Rock, Rockler is going to have a solid kit because a lot of the people that are using it are woodworkers themselves and they leave reviews. 
but also because all the parts except for the wheels um, in the in the straps there are solid metal and I prefer that over the plastic so after the wood came out of the planer I could trim it down to size you'll see later in the video I trim these down once again and the reasoning for that is because I keep forgetting the Morrison machine that I'm now using the maximum height is about four and three eighths so I had these at four and a half and I'll end up trimming them down a little bit just so they fit my Morrissey machine and make adjustments at that point but you can see just how nice and flat these are so for my tenons I'm going about two-thirds of the way into my piece so I drew marks um, two-thirds of the way on either ends of the bottoms of my styles just as a reference point and then I measured between those two points and got 37 inches now when I trim these pieces down you won't see it but I adjust these measurements because when the two ends are about um, a total of a half inch thinner I have to make the rails longer in order to account for that I don't show it in the video but that is something to consider when I when I say I trim them down so then for the rails they're a little bit thicker than the styles these are about five inches so I'm trimming these down to final size as well these don't have to go in the mortar sir so I'm not really limited by size and in the picture the the styles are the same width as the rails but the rails I wanted to be a little bit wider just for structure so I ended up beefing them up a bit so then the panel that's going in here is three quarter inch plywood so I'm cutting a 3 8 inch groove, 3 8 inch back from the opening, roughly. Um, 3 quarter inch plywood is not actually 3 quarter of an inch. It's usually a little bit uh, thinner than that. But in order to put that panel in here, that's the groove I'm cutting. So it's a 3 8 inch groove. And um, from the thumbnail, you can tell that the entire face of this door is flush. Um, the customer sent me a photo I'm working off of a photo that also means that there's a bigger gap in the back and I explained to them that that would be the situation and they were fine with that if you were doing a sol solid panel door you could build this with half inch plywood um, if it's if, it, if you want a flat panel I did three quarter because I'll be routing into it and I did half inch would have been too thin I didn't want it to snap so you can see I'm cutting those grooves this is about an inch groove so I did it in two two passes and the middle rail is the only one that's getting cut on both sides obviously so that the the panel can meet in the middle so then this is cutting the styles down to the size at this point I had remembered that the mortise machine they need to be about four and three eighths so I'll cut those down and then luckily I hadn't cut the rails down to to final so I could adjust that as well even with these that this tall in order to use the stop if you flip it upside down it will still hold this piece um, in place so I could use the stop as well so I already marked out my pieces and this is the first one so I'm going as thick as my initial dado groove I'm utilizing that dado groove in order to cut the haunch as you can see on my pieces I'm going to show you now how I'm cutting this one so you can see the dado grooves already taken out a lot of the material and I'm doing a double tenon on these so there will be a gap in the middle and haunches on either end the reasoning for the double tenon is this material usually uses uh, multiple tenons if the piece is really wide seasonal humidity will f affect the tenon a lot more if it's one solid piece the reason I'm doing the double tenon here is because I don't want to remove a ton of material out of um, the styles it'll become a weak joint the more material you remove so by splitting that tenon in half you're leaving a nice thick chunk of material in between those tenons and and leaving a little bit of the structural integrity of the of the door left so I already calculated the haunches and the tenons on the rails you could kind of see that it'll go down an inch and then it will go down further to about I think it was two and a half and then you could see where I'm, I'm calculating for the haunches I just drew that onto a scrap piece and then I transferred all of those marks onto my boards so you'll see I'm really only going down on those those two portions in order to get the double tenon the haunch is already in place from the dado groove so I won't be cutting that as well that little bit of space you see on either end won't be cut it's just those two bigger portions in the center so that is what that looks like you could see how there's the two bigger portions and then the two haunches on the edge and then the gap for the double tenon now this is 
is fur, so, so the Morrissey machine leaves it a little bit sloppy, so there was some cleanup to be done. But you can see I'm just using that jig to transfer it to the rest of my pieces, and then I could just easily cut it on the mortising jig, mortising machine. So I'm using the stop to, so I get it perfect. And when you're going down this far, you really have to use a lot of uh, leverage in order to get that mortar string machine to go down. And since obviously I'm going past the dado at this point, I'm gonna have to cut everything in one pass and then flip it around and cut it in a second pass. But using the mortising machine is kind of like a drill press. It's pretty self-explanatory. It's a matter of just staying in those marks and, and cutting down through the pieces. So I don't do a ton of filming with this. Um, I've used other machines in the past. This one someone gave me for free. Otherwise, honestly, I probably wouldn't have bought it. But it is a huge time saver and very accurate. So this is the scrap piece I have for um, cutting the tenons. As so you can see, I have it set up on my radial arm saw and I cut it so that it fits in there perfectly. Then I can use this scrap piece to just raise the blade of the radial arm saw and cut the tenons. So I have a stop set up and I can just cut all of these tenons on both sides. So I'm, I'm left with a, a equal distance from the two edges in the center. Mm, all those curve cuts you could just clean up with a chisel. Like I said, this is so this is the tenons are going to be on all the rails. So there was um, six total to cut but with the radial arm saw being able to raise and lower this is very quick work then i just transferred those marks for where i want the haunches and the tenons to go and i could cut all of my verticals pretty easily with a handsaw this is all very rough um, i'll go through and and clean up all this stuff with a chisel I could cut off those edges so those are the two haunches i'm left with I could just drill out the center of that piece and kind of knock it out and then I'm left with that double tenon and the two haunches. You can see I'll clean up that end bit with the chisel. This piece had a ton of knots in it so I, I cheated those knots to the back. That's another thing to consider is the back side of this you're, you're very rarely going to see so if you have imperfections in the lumber, cheat it to the back. See, I'm just roughly cleaning it up with a chisel, and then I could dry fit everything together. It's a nice snug fit. I don't really have to hammer on it or pound on it too much, but it takes some force to get it into place. So then I cut those tenons on all the pieces identically to what you just saw, and then I could dry fit this whole frame together. And the first dry fit, you'll see there are some hairline gaps. So I went through on all of my joints and just cleaned up all the joints until everything fits snug and flush. As you can see, there's those hairline gaps. Um, by the time I glued this together, those had disappeared. But you could also see that inner, uh, inner perimeter, that dado goes around the whole thing, which is perfect. That means my panels will sit in there flush. And that's about the end for this video.